flashback to 2010 on Chinese New Year's. My sister and I wait hungrily, but patiently, in the kitchen as my mom applies the finishing touches of the Taiwanese popcorn chicken by sprinkling the dish with a splash of cayenne pepper. I eagerly take that first bite into the popcorn chicken, enjoying the fried crunchiness of the skin and the savory flavor stemming from within. It is important to understand that night markets are an invaluable part of Taiwanese culture. Even the government of Taiwan has talked about the significance stating that there are quote markets that offer a wide variety of authentic Taiwanese food and drink as well as unique Taiwanese products. They are both practical and inexpensive and play an important part in the lives of Taiwanese people. However, night markets were not recognized as an important factor in the tourism aspect of Taiwanese culture and economy until around 2002 when the government decided to add night markets to the annual survey report of the Tourist Bureau as a popular international attraction site when visiting a country. After the government began to realize the economic potential of night markets, they began offering opportunities and incentives for local businesses in order to further improve the economy. I want to now walk you through a night market and what you would typically find within one. Not only do they provide various types of inexpensive foods and drinks, they also have vendors and booths that sell clothing and various appliances. The culture of night markets have been described as ru na, which is a Chinese phrase that can be translated to a lively or noisy environment. This is because of the popularity of night markets, which consequently leads to these destinations being extremely crowded most of the time. When you step into a night market, it's like stepping into another world. The various smells, sights, and sounds that you encounter are endless, which provides excitement and a sense of curiosity for what one might encounter for each visit to the night market. There are downsides to this constant noise and energetic atmosphere, however. Residents that live near night markets have often been found complaining about how their once quiet neighborhoods have now been infringed upon by the expansion of more vendors and booths within night markets. One example is the Shude night market. There are numerous laws and regulations attempting to control noise after a certain hour in the night. However, since it has not been strictly enforced, this leads to more tension between the business owners and local residents. A word used to describe night markets from local residents is called luat, which means chaotic. And when asking local residents who live right on top of street vendors and stalls, they tend to not appreciate the constant smells and the sounds that come on a nightly basis when living on top of night markets. And this further increases the tension and the issue of boundaries within Taiwan. Another issue is that Taiwan has been modernizing in recent years and many have criticized the appearance of night markets in which that night markets tend to look like uh, quote unquote areas of poverty. So this is another issue that has not been resolved as of now. Now, enough about the downsides of night markets. Here are a few clips from my interview with Ellen as she talks about her personal experiences with Taiwanese popcorn fried chicken and night markets. So Ellen is my cousin and we would frequently travel to Taiwan all the time. Um, and when we were in Taiwan, we would always spend time um, at the night markets um, and just enjoy a lot of food there. And uh, one particular dish that we would always enjoy um, would be the Taiwanese um, popcorn fried chicken. How would you describe night markets in Taiwan and how do you think that like impacts Taiwanese culture as well as how does that impact like food in general in Taiwan? I would describe night markets as very vibrant. Night markets um, are a really big part of Taiwanese culture I feel like, um, especially for tourists as well. Like everyone who goes to Taiwan go with um, night markets in mind. How would you describe this dish um, in general and then also like specifically in regards to at, at night markets? Uh, I guess for like popcorn fried chicken, um, it's kind of made to be able, like it, it's made to be bite-sized and easily, I guess, like eaten as a snack. Um, and so in Taiwan, like they make it as like, very, like I said, like bite-sized pieces of chicken, um, and then they put them on skewers. Um, but do you have any stories of, of how Taiwanese food and, and maybe Taiwanese popcorn fried chicken, but just in general, how how that influenced uh, your childhood and, and you traveling back to Taiwan? Yeah, I feel like food is definitely like a super, super big part of like my experience with Taiwan. And then whenever we like visited Taiwan and like stay with our grandparents, um, I feel like there are two 
I guess I would distinguish like two different experiences with food. Like one, like you said, is like um, it's kind of like we'd be eating our grandma's homemade food all day, but then like at night our uncle like brings back more food, and like this is kind of like a separate side of it where it's like it feels more fun. And so that's always been like kind of a fond memory that I have from visiting Taiwan. I'm going to now walk you through the steps on how to make Taiwanese popcorn fried chicken. First, you cut the chicken into bite-sized pieces before you add the soy sauce and other spices such as garlic powder, onion powder, and wu xiang fun, which is a five-spice seasoning that's extremely important. And then you begin to add the sweet potato starch, which is the breading for the chicken, before you begin to fry. Here's the final product for the Taiwanese popcorn fried chicken.